Coming to you live from the Alberta Hotel in beautiful Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, a traditional land in Treaty 6 territory. This is the 2023 edition of CKUA's Juno Couch with your host, Mr. Terry David Mulligan. Yeah. With special guests, Mark Jordan and Amy Skye, yeah. the weather station, Shakura Saida, John Dore, Sean Hall from the Harpoonist of the Axe Murderer, Dan Mangan, Angelique Francis, Digging Roots, Tom Wilson, plus CKUA hosts, Holger Peterson, Kate Stevens, Merrick Tyler, and Cam Hayden. My name is Grant Stovall, and I have the pleasure of being your MC. but please welcome our host, the legend himself, Sir Terry David Mulligan. <laughs> have a seat, have a seat, my friend. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, crew. Hello, uh, listeners, viewers. Uh, thank you for doing this. First of all, I, I came to you both individually and said, would you sit on the couch for a couple of hours and just talk to people and do my job for me? And, and so I hope you brought questions. I said I would only do it if Tom was here. So That's right. Uh, have you recovered from last night? I've recovered. I'm very uh, I'm concerned, Terry, that there's cameras because I'm going to have to. We're two hours doing this. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to hold my stomach in for two hours, Terry. <laughs> Very concerned. We have a stomach filter. It comes with me. <laughs> I'd like that 24 hours a day. And how was your last night, Dan? It was beautiful. It was a wonderful night. Uh, really nice to be back and dressing up and going out and doing things and getting away from my kids, and it's great. And for the both of you, do you have friends on this stage today? Oh, yeah. Yeah, lots of them. Sure. Uh, at least I consider them my friends. Yeah. I don't know what they think about me. I'm sure they do. And Dan? Oh, yeah. I mean, a lot of people, festival, workshop, stages, you know, you kind of cross-pollinate with a lot of these bands. Okay. And, yeah. This is way too quiet for me. Um, <laughs> let's make some noise. All right. Well, let's say you know our first band. So maybe, Dan Mangan, are you able to join us? Ah. I Ooh, see. I, I think I can do that. Our Let's first go. impromptu performance of the broadcast. Won't you please join All us right, for co-host of the Judo Couch Special, Dan Mangan, gamely hopping into the mix, grabbing his guitar and setting up his floor pedals. And uh, hey, Terry, live radio. Hey, thank you. It's it goes a like this. Thing. Uh, Dan, I remember t talking about the first song he's going to do, Fire Escape, uh, saying it's maybe the best song that he wrote or recorded or you you were you were crazy like you you lit, went over yourself uh talking about it uh on the internet web machine i think it was uh, written in 2020 something like that uh, uh but what was it about the song is this one um well it was written in, in june of 2020 and if i don't know if you guys remember you know oh, yes. what was happening around then yeah uh, but it was sort of the height of lockdown and also you know george floyd protests that's right and um it was a very complicated time. We were, everything was exploding out on the streets and imploding within everybody's home. And so this, uh, this song is kind of like a, uh, you know, it, it's a bit of a tribute to that moment, but in general, you know, I think. Dan Mangan. Meet me out by the fire escape. It's been 40 nights. Forty days and I become uncertain in a cosmic way. I chewed my fingers to the bone today. Oh, won't you come around? Meet me by the fire escape. Untie this tight tongue tie. What is it that I want to say? What is it that I really want to say? What are the words I've been choking on? Open someone, I'll articulate. Oh, no, that's some murky water. All right, we're in the trenches now. I don't know when the party's over. All I know is I'm getting out somehow. Oh, what a fever dream. Meet me out by the fire escape. We'll join the procession down the alleyway. Oh, our freedom's a joke and we've got debts to pay. How many waves until the levee breaks? Oh, won't you come around? 
Meet me by the fire escape Untie these tight tongue ties What is it that we want to say? What is it that we really want to say? But are the truths we've been choking on Open someone I'll articulate Oh no, that's some murky water All right, we're in the trenches now I don't know how the story ends Cause the pages just turn over and then turn over again And redemption's always out of sight and just around the bend And the outcome doesn't match with what it is that I intend Like a stack of books that grows and gathers dust beside the bed Or the disconnect between what people do and what they've said and I want to read the news, maybe without losing my head. Oh, what a fever dream. Live radio is a good time to have a coughing fit, right? <laughs> Meet me out by the fire escape It's been 40 nights and 40 days And I have become uncertain in a cosmic way I chewed my fingers to the bone today Thank you Nice big swig of water after that, hey? Um, thank you. Um, I wrote this for uh, a talented songwriter who uh, left us way too early. And uh, so now it's, it's for him, but it's also for anyone who is uh, feeling a hard down swoop their existential dread. <clears throat> why, why can't the seers see a way out when they drown in information, when they're stranded at the station, when their film begins to fade out? Now we're crying in the shower. Crying in the car park, crying in the office towers. Trying not to get dark, trying hard to fight that darkness, trying not to count the hours. So come find us if you can. We'll be unified and sad. We'll be in your corner. Leave a light on when it's bad. We will congregate and make a plan. We'll be in your corner. We'll all be in your corner. Why? It leads the best of us to suffer. Do they know their pain and write it down to help the rest of us recover? Now we're crying in the shower, crying in the car park, crying in the office tower. Yeah, we're trying not to get dark, trying hard to fight that darkness, trying not to count the hours. Oh, come find us if you can. We'll be unified and sad. We'll be in your corner. Leave a light on when it's bad. We will congregate and make a plan. We'll be in your corner. 
I'll be in your corner. Leave a light on if you can until it's crystal clear. Do you understand? I'll be in your corner. Come on over here, Dan. Dan Mangan, the album is being somewhere. I think you actually called it, if I'm not mistaken, music for the depressed post-pandemic millennium. <laughs> sort of. Something like that. Particularly, there was, a, there was a music video for the first song, Fire Escape, um, and it was sort of like a Calvin and Hobbes, you know, I had like an alter <laughs> yeah. ego, a, a, an embodiment of a, my psyche. And so I'm trying to go about my, my life, and he's sticking his fingers in my ear and punching me in the face and tripping me. And I, um, I, it was sort of like Calvin and Hobbes for the, yeah, for the depressed millennial. By the way, I like the glasses. Oh, thank you. You know, this is, uh, I'm almost turning 40 this year. So, you know, I, all, I was, you know, I was at uh, Science World with my kids in Vancouver, and there was a menu on the wall. Yeah, yeah was, you could uh, read. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife's okay. like, I think so, it's time. So what I need to know in, in previous performances, was it the audience you couldn't see or the fret? Uh, yeah, it was. I was closing my eyes because I had to write the lyrics on the inside right. of my eyelids. Okay. You know. yeah. uh, Grant, would you be so kind as to introduce our next guest? I would love to. Have we got Angelique coming up next? I believe she's coming up now. I'm so excited. I was in the, in the uh, building when Angelique won some hardware last night, which is such a thrill. We're going to ask you to please welcome the great Angelique Francis. Now... She was truly born to make music. She is from an amazing musical family. In fact, they're kind of her band. And she's been taking the Canadian and world blues scene by storm since she was, what, seven years age, of age when she made her debut as a musical artist and has not been looking back even once. Heck, just this year, this amazing artist from the Ottawa area picked herself up two Maple Blues Awards and last night won Blues Album of the Year at the at the Darn 2023 Juno Awards, just across the street here. Amazing, please give it up for Angelique Francis, ladies and gentlemen. And also, what you don't know in your notes is that she also won Chef of the Year. <laughs> she doesn't know it yet, she's been nominated. Um, uh, well, you know what I, I was trying to describe, because your band's not here. You're, you're a singular artist standing here. You could do it with an upright bass, and I know that you probably have done solo performances, but on your right, looking at your stage, you've got a two-person horn section over here, the bone, uh, 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 sax, no, uh, a, a baritone, baritone sax, a guitar, uh, a horn over here, a drummer in the back, which is your dad. Yes, that's right. The horn section, the, the ladies to your, your right, our left, are your sisters? Yes, that's right. Wow. <laughs> and you're writing with your dad, who's at the back, who's doing the beat. Are you handling keys? Is someone else hiding on the stage? Pardon? Is there a keyboard player in the band? Yeah, so um, our band comes in many different iterations. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's four to six to so sometimes ten. Uh, when we play with a six piece, our uh, trombonist, sorry, our trumpetist, uh, Ed Lister, also plays keys as well. But uh, Kira, who plays trombone, my little sister, also plays there keys. There you go. <laughs> and was it your father, or your household, where you heard the music that influenced you? So it's kind of come full circle for him and you. The music you grew up on, you, you're sort of um, riding that, cresting that wave. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I grew up listening to a lot of amazing music around the house. And I'm just so glad that people have really enjoyed our combination of many different genres and the influences that we have. And um, I hope it inspires them to create whatever they want to create, cross genre boundary lines, and just do what makes them feel good. I have to say that uh, we were sitting at the table right beside that stage where you accepted, and it was very emotional to see you and your family up there, I have to say, and your dad. And um, just uh, that uh, people maybe aren't aware, but that blood on blood 
workings of music and art, you know, when especially generational, it, it, it's, it was so beautiful to see. And I tried to get your attention coming off the stage because I loved you guys so much, but you ignored me completely. <laughs> Wait, no, it didn't. Oh, <laughs> I would have run the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so delightful to see you. Oh, and th thank congratulations. you so much. Thank you. Did you get everything said you wanted to say last night like in way of acceptance? Yeah, yeah. Um, I know there's so many names and so many, you know, people who have supported us, but I'm I'm really lucky that, you know, I have such an amazing team behind me. We're completely independent, and so all the people that I listed last night are all the people who put work into this album, and I'm really, really proud of them, and I'm so lucky to have them. Dan, do you have a microphone in your hand? Okay, you we're, we're, we're sharing. But, uh, <laughs> um, I mean, so, and, and you said that you made this record largely, like, in your at home in your basement. Um, yeah. This was a pandemic wow. uh, record, I tell you. Completely in our home studio. Yeah, yeah. amazing. <laughs> I mean, I think it's it's amazing that these days, um, that I mean, I have a, a studio in my basement too, that, you know, it, recording has become kind of democratic. Like, we don't have to rely on the big studios. Exactly. You know, you can do it yourself. And, I mean, what an amazing thing to, to share. Was there, were there moments where you um, were driving each other crazy, you know? Uh, no, not at all. No, we work so seamlessly. Um, <laughs> Can I join your family? <laughs> yeah, sure. Join along. <laughs> Amazing. That's all. What's I got. the plan? Uh, here's the, here's mine. How long did it take you to find your voice? To find the voice that you realized was the one you should be using, and and it felt like right to be inside your body. How long did it take? Well, I think. As soon as I started performing as a musician, you know, at age seven, as soon as I hit that at stage. At age seven? I knew, I knew that this is where I wanted to be. I mean, music can connect with people on a level unlike any other. And before that, you know, I was very introverted. Music helped grow, yeah. like, who I am as a person. Yeah. I, I found who I am as, you know, a non-performing musician, just as a, as a person walking around connecting with people. Music taught me how to be me. So I, I just, I wouldn't have it any other way. Have you talked to your family? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Back? I mean, they were, they were on stage with me last night accepting okay. the award. And <laughs> All right. Hey, Angelique, I've, I've been such a fan of yours for so long. And every time I see you, I'm like just blown away that somebody of any age has that ability to perform. Like you are just a ball of like, amazing emotional energy on stage and so galvanizing and like whether people are already aware of your music or not they just get swept up they can't help it and I, every time I've seen it I'm like where did she get this from like did you have like uh, just in terms of live performance did you have somebody that was like a mentor for you or maybe a, a hero in the community that you looked up to that you thought was a really dynamic live performer or even just somebody that you love to watch on YouTube or something like that? Yeah, I mean, there's so many different influences that I have. I, I play a multitude of different influ uh, musicians, sorry, I play a multitude of different instruments and I have a lot of different genres and so there's, you know, inspiration for every single aspect of what I do. I definitely think that one of my biggest mentors, uh, she's been like a sister and adoptive mother to me, is one of the musicians that's actually in the house tonight, Shakura Saida. She's wow! Absolutely incredible. And, and if I could, uh, shout out for the bass players. Like, as you say, you play a zillion instruments. You choose to front the band and play upright bass. The bass player is kind of the secret boss of the band really and kind of the person that like interacts with the vocals the most in a way what is it about being able to play the bass as like your lead instrument on stage that you're projecting out to everybody why why did you go with the bass of all the different things that you could do within the band structure yeah well I play a lot of different uh, instruments on stage so sometimes it's upright bass sometimes it's electric bass blues harmonica acoustic guitar electric guitar keys sometimes there's other instruments but they won't fit in the tour band you know what I mean so <laughs> but I I do a lot of different things in my songwriting I like to tell stories I like to uh, have messages that you know reach out to people in different ways and I really like the bass because it's very like it commands a different kind of movement within people. And I like to do that when we do fast paced, engaging performances. I like the audience to be involved in the music making. And so when I'm playing so many different instruments, 
I don't necessarily have the hands to give people cues. But if I'm playing the bass and I'm leading the rhythm section, they can hear it and we connect in that way. And then of course, you know, I give them cues like my foot and all this other stuff. And it's a lot of fun to do. It's a, it's a kind of a Charlie Mingus thing. <laughs> Better get it in your soul. Oh uh, yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, welcome to the Grant Stobel Show, ladies and gentlemen, and, uh, and all of our, uh, our, our panelists here. Uh, we're going to, uh, you're going to introduce our next guest. But, it would be my great we'll pleasure. Say, we'll say thank you to Angelique for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> the great Angelique Francis, a Juno Award winner, I will add. Wow, amazing. Speaking of recently minted Juno Award winners, one of the very finest in all of Turtle Island is about to grace the stage here at CKUA's live performance space. They busted onto the music scene here in Canada and the musical world in 2009 with their debut album, We Are. The founding couple behind this incredible musical unit is Shoshona Kish and Raven Kanaktakta. They've gone on to win two Juno Awards, a Native American Music Award, multiple Canadian Aboriginal Music Awards, their 2022 release, A Thing of Beauty, entitled Joanum not only earned them a nomination for Contemporary Indigenous Artist or Group of the Year in an absolutely stacked lineup at this year's Junos. Last night across the street, they won the damn thing. I had the great pleasure of speaking with them a couple of times. They've joined Terry before. They've been so generous with CKUA over the years, and they have gotten up the morning after winning a Juno Award, like the day that we spring forward on the clocks, no less, and the full darn band is on stage and ready to join us, so won't you please join me in giving a giant CKUA Juno's 2023 welcome to the brilliant Digging Roots. Yeah, brother. So great to be here with our CKUA family, and I just want to say chimigwech for all of your support. We really love you guys. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is a song called Sweetwater.
Uh, so we're having a really wonderful weekend here in Edmonton, <laughs> I have to say. And it was so great to be with, uh, with so many friends last night and family and community. And it was so good to see so many black and brown faces in the audience. And, you know, I, uh, you guys can cheer louder, louder for that. Yeah. <laughs> it was really beautiful. <laughs> um, this is a song called Skoden. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to play it with five strings. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I don't need that one. I don't need that one. <laughs> <laughs> we always playing a uke downstairs. It's only got four. <laughs> right? It's true. Okay, let me, let me just uh, check this here. <laughs> There we go. Uh, We're good. <laughs> All right, shall we? Yeah. Oh. Can't slow down, can't sit still, can't get some peace of mind. Can't slow down, can't sit still, can't get some peace of mind. made a change was to be brave and unrestrained leading with our hearts not with our brains feel would be our courage now hope would be our strength can't slow down can't sit still gonna get some peace of mind 
couch come on fantastic wow oh hello shoshona how are you we, oh, hey, we, we got to get a bigger stage <laughs> <laughs> this one was perfect are you coming over come on over how are you now you you guys know each other yeah i love her <laughs> well i'm in love um <laughs> <laughs> I'm also in love with him. Yeah, <laughs> we're all going to get along. That's a love fun. thing. Apparently, you're not alone. <laughs> Dan, have you crossed paths with him? We were, uh, we were, we were trying to figure out. I think it was a hotel lobby some ages. I think we years ago. Yeah, and it's so yeah. cool to see a hotel uh, lobby. Yeah, or, uh, who'd have thought? Hey, yeah. this is um, like the mecca for musicians. Really. Exactly. That's yeah. right. In the, for, you know, checking in your bag you know, at the yeah. festival gear tent or something like that. <laughs> um, but. Seeing you guys uh, since then, it, the the awards, and also I'm so I'm I'm t taking all your questions here. No, but no, I'm so curious. I want to hear all about like how this label began, and the oh, yeah. the, 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 the sort of uh, how that story came. Because I I know how hard that whole thing is, and it's um, you guys are just doing and how important it is to have that on right. your label. Yeah, how important thanks. that is. Thank you. Yeah, Ishkade Records was really um, a dream for us, and. I think that maybe it would have happened at a later time except for this pandemic that had us in our homes for <laughs> all of this time not on the road. And yeah, so it just felt like the right moment for us to like take advantage of all of this pent up energy that we had and put it towards community. And uh, yeah. Did you feel like there was like a, like a void that you were filling with this? Like, was there sort of like a, I mean, I, I've read your, your, the about section on the, on the site, it's beautiful. Talk about you know not only um, enriching and, and uplifting Indigenous voices, but also uh, 
creating like a stakeholder, uh, letting the artists be stakeholders in the label? Is there is there like a new model that's that's going on here or? Yeah, you know, I think we didn't want to just like cut and paste music industry stuff into our space. We have our own ways of doing things. So I think we haven't figured it out perfectly, but we're definitely starting somewhere a little bit different. You are not cut and paste people. No. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we had you on tour uh, with Blackie and the Rodeo Kings. Yeah. I got to, I mean, I know you guys, we know each other from before, but uh, getting to hear you every night uh, and the message of love and the importance and the promotion of unity um, is oh, it opened up the hearts of so many people and it continues to do that and I've got Scott you told me downstairs you know we we represent the uh, Im the important needs of our communities you had that beautiful land back jacket on last night and uh, and it was questioned it was uh, like people wanted to know in the press room what land back was which uh, I know to us is such a surprise it's like how have you been living under a rock how do you not know about land back yeah. is there a question in that yeah there is a question in there. <laughs> well i'm not a professional interviewer but i got so, the couch <laughs> well um cousin because well, uh, we are cousins we are cousins yeah, yeah i think yeah. we're like fourth cousins or something it's pretty amazing <laughs> yeah um well i think for something like land back it's it's really interesting because I've seen both sides of it where people get really offended by it, and I'm like, why? You know, because you can just look at the amount of colonialism in this country and assimilation and oppression and uh, genocide, and I was like, okay, take a breath, <laughs> you know. And I like land back is really when you're um, it's an understanding. It's uh, it's it's a cultural teaching. So when we're talking about land, it's not like we're going to take back all the land because it's not about that. Like we come from a collective people, and when you're collective, everything belongs to everybody. And the land, we don't believe that we actually own the land. We are caretakers of the land, and consequently, we belong to the land. So there's a whole shift. A cultural paradigm there that uh, people need to get a hold of to framework it within an indigenous context because we are on Turtle Island. And does does music have the power? Thank you. Does music have the power to change? Absolutely. I I think you know music changes me every day. It's yeah. a great teacher and it's a great unifier. And, and I think that it really has the potential to transcend, you know, the things that get in the way for us. It is its own language, you know, and okay. uh, yeah. So I'm really glad that we're speaking that language together this morning. It's so true. Um, and even though it wasn't a question, you, you filled in exactly what I wanted you to fill in was because the questions do come up. Well, it's land back, so you did it great. And I know I I'm 63 and I know I look like an old biker, but I just have to talk about your earrings, Shoshona. Oh. They are absolutely fantastic. Yes, thank you. This, these earrings were made by this woman, Dallas, who is part of our medicine lodge, and she's so brilliant. And she made them specially for the Junos for me. So, Beautiful. yeah, I feel yeah. adorned, you know, by my community. That's the very first earring question we've ever had. <laughs> These earrings are on worth the Juno it. couch. Yeah. No, there was one. There was yeah. one in a nose somewhere. That was it. That was the only one. Okay, Dan, you want a microphone? There you go. Thank you. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I'm inspired uh, by what you guys are doing, and uh, I. I I, I don't have a good question other than um, I oh, think that on, you know from the well from the you know coming as a as a settler um, I, uh, I I appreciate that often a message as simple as Lambach can be taken at face value in a very literal sense particularly by people who are feeling maybe defensive about the past and uh, I think that it would uh, we would all do well to you know, sort of approach uh, that's that um, that phrase or, or, or you know, it's like, it's like when we talk about uh, defund the police or something. It's this for me. It's like that's what we. It's not about removing it. It's about it's about um, 
taking another look at how things have been done yep. and wondering, can we collectively make it better? Better. And that's, I think that, I mean, that's, I don't want to speak for you. I think that that's, for me, that's what I hear when I see those words. And I think that that's really, that's really cool. Yeah. And that's everything, right? Like, I just feel like my teachings say that I need to be here walking gently and making this a better place than when I arrived, you know, and making a contribution in a meaningful way. Like, that's our, all of our jobs. Last question. Um, th uh, how did it feel like in the moment last night? What did it feel like? Well, it was did amazing your, for a did while. Did your heart burst? Yeah. I, I think my heart grew five sizes that day. <laughs> I, I've often said about awards that you know, oh, they don't, you know, they don't, they don't mean, they don't mean anything when they call your name. name. It is the most exciting thing, and everyone's cheering. And it's there's nothing, nothing like but, it. But but what I mean by that is that um, our son Sky's been on this journey with us, and uh, and my heart was it, it grew bigger because he got to be acknowledged by the community. And uh, when we're acknowledged by our peers, um, it feels like you come from someplace. There you go. And so for him to, to be welcomed into that circle uh, was really beautiful. So I just got to be a proud dad. <laughs> a hand, please. Dig and Roots, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Now, now. When people say, well, what is, what is the Juno couch? That's the Juno couch right there. This, 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 these communities all meeting on the Juno couch. Now, um, those of you who might remember the history of the Juno couch was that it started in the lobby bar at the Hotel McDonald. They didn't know we were there. We just did it. We bore the couches. And then we did it at the bottom of the Space Tower in uh, Calgary. And then we did it in front of Milestones on the street. That was fantastic. Yeah. And this is the fourth. And the guy that co-hosted with me for those three shows was Jim Cuddy. He's playing hockey. <laughs> but I think we may have him a connection. Oh. All right, so here we go. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, okay. So, Jim Cuddy. Cherry, is that you? Buddy. Hi, Cherry. Oh, oh, we, we only have a minute here. I love you, Terry, but we, I can't go at your time speed anymore. <laughs> we have to go out for the skills competition. So we're going to do a little performance for you. Here we go. Focus, buddy. <laughs> Focus. I can see hand claps. I can't it's hear you. I don't remember that. Don't know where it's from. I took a wrong turn and I just kept going. <laughs> Everybody's got a hungry heart. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Lay down your money and you play your part. Everybody. He's got a hungry heart. Jimmy! I'm in a little change down bar. You had enough? That's it. We get a little love. I knew it. Had you in. What's we took what we had and we ripped it apart. What's One a score for the hockey game? Here we are down at the town again. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Everybody's got a hungry heart. Lay down your money and you play your part. Everybody's got a hungry heart. <laughs> Thank you, James. That is the whole Juno Cup team. We're just between periods. The first, the first period team came off with a one to nothing uh, deficit. One to nothing against a whole bunch of recently retired NHLers. Excellent. Ben Scrivens. Total master in the fields. Total master. So yeah, oh, all good. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Hand for Jim Cuddy, please. Okay. And whoever shot all right, that. I think we're saying goodbye. Wake up, people. All right. Is Wonderful. it okay if we borrow part of your band? Yes, absolutely. You know, just if, you, if you're in the room, because we have a, we have another guest. Yes, yes, he's a good friend, musically. <laughs> Here's the introduction. All right. He's not wearing hockey gear today, as far as I'm aware, but we do have somebody that could just about do it all. His name is John Hall, part of the Vancouver-based juggernaut known as the Harpoonist and the Axe Murderer. 
They made quite the name for themselves as one of the most scintillating live acts in this or any land. They've been playing together for more than 15 years. It's kind of amazing when you put all that together to think that they had never, until very recently, made a live album. Have they ever made a live album in serious fashion? In fact, they did it right here in Alberta at the famed King Eddie Hotel. That was done with the incredible Rolling Stones mobile studio. On this, on this Rolling Stones mobile. Absolutely. Part of history along with Led Zeppelin, Bob Marley, Neil Young, and so many. Those guys. Those guys. We have this guy over here, one half of that duo. His name is Sean Hall. And their album, Live at the King Eddie, was nominated for Blues Album of the Year at the 2023 Juno Awards. And I have an, I have an ad for this. The song that, uh, that uh, Sean's going to do with the Digging Roots, was written weeks a week ago. It's the first time it's ever been performed. All right. You well, what, uh, this is kind of the kind of Juno couch magic that we can only dream of. How about it? Backed up by members of Digging Roots for an impromptu live CKUA performance. How about it for the harpoonist himself, one half of the harpoonist and the axe murderer, Sean Hall. <laughs> Now this tune is called Good People. Could have named it something other and crazy and dark and nasty, but I've been down that road before, so it's time for Good People Tunes.
But together we can have it all. So let's get together. Let's keep it together. Let's hold it together, y'all. Did we come here to dance? Or did we come here to die? Are we waiting for nature's paradise beyond the sky? Drops can found us, but we can still be found. Fifty thousand watts of static, still a way to ground. 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 Come over here with your heart, would you please? Thank you, band. Thank you, audience. Thank you, shooters. Come on over here, man. Figure that stuff. We'll we'll find someone else. No, never mind. It's your little. <laughs> Who do you know on the couch, John? Oh, hey, how are you? Who do you know? You know Dan? Yeah, I know Dan. I know Tom. The only time that I've met you, Tom. Uh, was on stage uh, at uh, Colin James' show. Okay. Uh, at the Commodore? At the Orpheum. Yes, okay. I don't remember anything anymore. Oh, man. But you know what? Usually in front of 2,000 people, you would remember. <laughs> the, uh, that performance was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Thanks. you so much. Uh, I, by the way, Thank you. Just, for, just for the record, what's the name of the song? Uh, Good People. Good people, and, it, and uh, thank you. And, and you didn't stray far there. That's like snakes on a plane. Uh, and uh, you co-wrote it with? I co-wrote it with Gordy Johnson ten days ago. Oh, wow! In the last hour, he put me up on his ranch with his family as their uh, fourth child for ten days. We made a record, and. Uh, Man, I'm going to cry thinking about this. No one's ever done this for me in my life. He said, are you going to go to the Junos? We need to get you a new Harpoonist record now. Yeah. I flew down, and I wrote the song in the last day, in the last three hours, and it came shooting out of the skies and digging roots. When I saw that uh, my family was on the, on, the, on the gig, I was like, oh, hey, can we maybe try this? <laughs> so, well, yeah. well, well. That's fresh. Amazing. Yeah, it's fresh. I like your band, too. I like... The interplay. Holy smokes! Love the song. Like, but so, do you need to? Do we need nicknames for everyone else on the stage now? <laughs> I know. The, you know the uh, axe wielding, the uh, spear launching, I know. You know, like, <laughs> the skin, the skin pulling. But, but uh, you know, we axe murderers. Uh, you guys are on CSI. You know, uh, you're you're our previous yeah. axe murderer. Yeah, I'm getting at the murdering thing. Yes. You know, I, yeah, yeah, my yeah. joke flying. No, anyways, we were on like Lizzie Borden takes an axe. At any show that has violence in it. No. Yeah. You Perfect. know, kids festivals. Hey, solid. No, by the way, 
by the way, on the uh, on the live of the King Eddie, also on that recording was Don Pemberton. Oh! Don Pemberton. So, Don, if you're out there, congratulations. Well done. Well yeah. done. That's, I, I wish Don was here last night. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's been Andrina okay. uh, Tiren, uh, formerly of Chic um, and she was she's here as well. Okay. And that, that's the record. Real quick questions, and we've got to boot you. Up. We're going to okay. show you the door. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, when will that album come out? If you recorded it just recently. What do you mean? When when will that? Oh, when will this record yeah, yeah. come out? Come up to me and I'll and give me your phone and I'll give you the record. It's it's on. I got it on my phone here and I'll just like that's how it's going to happen. When is it going to come out? For outside of this joint, um, maybe the next month or so. And will you? Will it's we, fresh. I mean, you, it's fresh, fresh. Are we fresh. going to see you on tour the rest of these years? Yeah, Gordy's going to be the new Axe Murder, but not the Axe Murder. It's going to be Harpoonist, big Harpoonist, Sugar. You throw it, Dan. I was leaving oh, it for man. you. Like it's the, all the puns. Big, right. big Poonist. I'm gonna go there. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Sorry, mom. <laughs> I gotta say, there's a, there's a. Once a song is recorded and it's been heard and it's been cast around, that that becomes like the finite thing that a song is. And from then on, people compare a live version to that recording. But there is something so special about when it's still in the ether of sort of like yeah. we don't know what this song is and we're fig- you know what I mean like that was so special man yeah so special. thank you thanks Dan that means a we lot. like the song so in other words we like the song we like the song right yeah. okay thank you Sean Hall thanks thank you brother thank you our next guest is a Canadian comedy legend he is a Canadian comedy award winner and actor currently based in Juneau Alaska. He studied broadcasting at Algonquin College in Ottawa, became a correspondent for the hit CTV show Canadian Idol. In addition to his many comedy tours, he has appeared in numerous comedy specials, talk shows, and sitcoms. He most recently produced and starred in the 2021 sitcom Humor Resources. And I don't know if it's... I. At last night's Juno Awards, I kept thinking, is Terry making this happen? But one by one, members of his guest list kept coming home with hardware. At last night's Juno Awards, his 2022 album, A Person Who Is Gingerbread, won the 2023 Comedy Album of the Year at the Juno Awards. He's now here to perform and chat with us. Just ahead of his performance, won't you please join me in welcoming with a giant CKUA ovation, the great, the brilliant, John Dore. Hello, John. What a lovely introduction that was. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You should, okay. No, yeah. no, no. So this is how we shift. Very yeah. loose here. That was great. Do you know anybody on the couch? Anybody? Um, anybody? Well, I, I, well, I feel like we do now. That was great. Um, Terry, we met ages ago uh, at a junket in New York City. At a junket? Uh, yeah. You wouldn't remember it at all, but yeah. No, because junkets. You, are you were incredibly professional. Thank you. And I was just <laughs> taking the opportunity for a free flight to New York. Uh, but it was, I can't, the, the, it was like some, it was Shall We Dance was one of the movies, and then Alfie was another one. Were you asking the questions? I was asking questions. Oh, you were a junketeer? Yeah, I was, I oh was also, God. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you wouldn't remember it at all, but it was just a brief kind of, uh, yeah, you know, kind of in awe of Terry David Mulligan and Thank asking you questions. Much. You had notes. And I, I had like, notes. Well, this guy's prepared. Which is the yeah. highest honor I can give, is to have notes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, here's what I need to know. This has been bugging me, driving me crazy, and it's, a, and it's a basic question. We kind of know how the music nominations work. You release an album, you tour, you, you, that collective raises your profile. How in the hell do they judge the comedy awards? Is it laughs per minute? Uh-huh. Um, I don't know. Uh, they shouldn't do that if that's the case. Um, because sometimes it takes three minutes to get to that laugh. Sure, right. it depends what kind of comedian you are. Yeah. So, uh, and is it your peers that are judging? I don't know. I have no you idea what the process know. is. Yeah. Well, I mean, I haven't investigated the matter. I was nominated. Uh, my sister's uh, album label, uh, Howlin' Roar, uh, is where I, is the company that I was with to produce the album, and it was nominated, and we were very excited. I got to hang out with my friends, be part of this great week in Edmonton, and uh, yeah, it feels nice that. Uh, the musicians welcome comedians now. It hasn't always been this case. But let's, 
Oh, it's a, it's so fun. I, I used to be quite cynical about this whole approach. I was like, you know what? Comedy shouldn't be nominated. It didn't, it didn't deserve to be part of an award show. Like, we're the cynical outsiders that will comment on your little award we shows. We can heckle and make fun. But that's the old me. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I, uh, I couldn't be happier to be part of the fun and the party, and uh, yeah, it was a great week, but I don't, know how they, I don't know how they judge it. Someone judged it, and someone decided, uh, rightfully so, that I was the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did I see your entourage come in as well? No, I, I, I come alone. That's the other thing. I, comedians were by ourselves. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I saw some kids run in. Sorry. Um, did you say what you wanted to say? Did you insult anybody last night? I didn't hear. Did I insult yeah. anyone last well, night? Well, I mean, you know, you had a chance. Uh, do, do you mean when I was on stage? No, yeah. no, no, no. I'm saying that's the old me. Oh, I'm I saying see. I couldn't be happier to be part of the party. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it was a lovely experience. So I thank my sister and my beautiful uh, uh, partner, Christina, who's back in Juneau, Alaska. See, yep. I made the mistake one day of meeting a human woman. That's sure. my criteria. Love. love human, will do that. human and woman. There's, there's only... Let's I, give I, this a go, I, right? I saw that Juno Alaska. I said, that's love. Yeah. That's love. Yeah. And so, I, uh, but, but without her, uh, I thanked her because without her, I can't be on the road and I can't be here this weekend. So, uh, yeah, that's what I did. I was in the speech. I was very, uh, I was impressed with myself. I was very sincere and sweet. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything you'd like to shamelessly plug? Uh, n n not necessarily. I mean, I'm on the road in uh, Cam uh, next week. I hit the road in Kamloops and Kelowna and uh, Victoria. Um, you can go to johndoor.com if you want to look at oh, tickets. There are no people yeah. out there. Yeah, and that's how you get tickets and can't be like, so excited to be back on the road. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Now, what do you know about music? Where's your music? What do I know about where, 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 I've heard it no, before. No. I've heard it before. Yeah. But you, you have a musical background. Where did you? I have a musical background. I mean, I love music, of course. I don't know anyone who doesn't. But I, I mean, I played a bit of piano, a bit of guitar, a saxophone for many years. Uh, but no, I'm in awe of all these people. Tom used to listen to and watch all the time. Actually, you performed a house show in Winnipeg once at my cousin's uh, in-laws. I, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that, nice to meet you. I, yeah. I voted for you. Not actually for the Juno of Karis, just at our table, because we had a thing going. Carrie had a thing going that we voted for who our favorite was going to be, so I voted for you. Oh, so. is that? Okay. Also, uh, thanks. I just wanted to say you do belong here because people don't know about the circle of abuse, and the circle of abuse is as follows. Uh, actors want to be musicians. Mm -hmm. Musicians want to be comedians. Mm -hmm. Comedians want to be actors. Did I get it right? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think I would love to be a musician, but uh, then I see all the hard work that has to go into it, and I'm like, I don't know. I mean, it's just constant, and everyone's got to be healthy at the same time for the show to go on. Yes, Terry. It appears as though your <laughs> stage time is now. Oh, nice. yeah. Well, that was the other thing. I mean, I was, they asked me to perform some stand-up comedy, but the difficult thing is I'm here, and I knew this would be the problem. There's so many beautiful, soulful performances that I'm in awe of. I see people in the audience being moved. Um, and so it's very awkward to, uh, to tell jokes in the middle of all this. It, it comes across as quite silly. So uh, you're going to... Well, I, I prepared a, a song. Oh, wonderful. So I thought I would... Oh! Yeah. So, is that something I should do now? Or? If you could do it now, we'll, we'll applaud you uh, over there. You'll be carried by a wave of sure, thank appreciation. You. I appreciate it. Anyway, thanks for chatting. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you. Congratulations. I will pee my pants if he does this. Yeah, like I said... Um... Like I said, and I'll just repeat it again, um, it really is so nice to be here as a comedian at the Juno Awards. It hasn't been happening for, uh, for uh, well, it's only been happening in the last few years, and uh, we all feel very grateful, but like I really do mean it. To come up here and just tell jokes would not work. Um, everything was just so beautiful tonight. So what I've decided to do is prepare a song, and I thought that would be the right thing to do in harmony with the other uh, performers here today. Um, and we live in a very interesting world now with a lot of complex intersectional identities. So I thought I would write a song, uh, and I hope you enjoy it. It's about a homosexual Nazi, and uh, it is called Schindler's Lisp. <laughs> Yeah. 
It needs lyrics. <laughs> but other than that, a pretty great song. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Grant, here we go. Here we go. Here this... comes to this moment. You do, I don't think you... Well, you may know most of these folks that are coming up. Yes. But we're going to have to squinch because squinch, there's lots of us. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think a lot of us probably also know the folks that are coming up. We're going to ask now some very distinguished CKUA broadcasters to come join Terry and company on the Juno's couch and have a little confabulation about the Juno's of 2023. Exactly. So won't you please join me in welcoming the host of Tagaki, Merrick Tyler is here. Merrick? Your host of The Upload, Kate Stevens, has made the trip. Hello, Kate. Cam Hayden, celebrating 45 years as an incredible CKUA broadcaster. And somebody by the name of Dr. Holger Peterson is present as well. Hello, Holger. Is there anyone else in the room that qualifies as a CKUA host? <laughs> okay. You, you're more than welcome to join up. Hello there. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, okay. Do you know our guest host? Have you met? Come on. Now. Gra speak into a microphone. Okay, here Over. we go. Here we go. No, here Cam. Go. Here, high Cam, five. High five. You right take there. the middle. Right there. Right there. Okay. Take, take the microphone in the middle. There you go. So we're here. Carrie. Now, Carrie Clark. Yeah. Right on. Carrie Clark, yes. Right. Another one. I knew you were in the room. All right. Here's a... Here's what I wanted to know, uh, as you've, uh, because there's so many categories going, and this weekend is just a blur when you think about it. What one category did you were, were you keenly interested in, and why? For me, yeah. uh, the, the indigenous categories for specifically. The reason being is that we need representation at every level, uh, on the stage, uh, backstage, at every level. So I saw a traditional representation, I saw contemporary representation. Congratulations to all of them, because indigenous music is not a genre at all. We are everywhere, we've been here, and we'll always be here. So it was great to see that. Number two, I got one more, sorry, one more, is that uh, I was really excited about Andrew Belfour. If you haven't seen or heard his work, Andrew Belfour, beautiful classical album. He's, uh, I believe he's Anishinaabe from Manitoba. It's gorgeous. So Andrew Belfour, if you're hearing this, way to go, buddy. Tagaki, it was beautiful. Pass that mic over there, will you? What about you, Kate? Uh, I was really excited about the traditional R&B category. Uh, I think that, you know, Canada, we get a lot of praise for our folk and our country, especially in the prairies. I mean, it's some of the best coming out. Um, but it was really exciting to see R&B spotlighted. I mean, the Honest Guy from Toronto has made just an absolutely fantastic record. So it was just really exciting to see that representation. And uh, I just love the genre. I just, I'm in love. <laughs> Cam. Uh, big surprise here. I was in. I was really looking forward to the blues category, and um, not just because I'm a blues guy, but I thought there were some really wonderful uh, entrants in that category. Harrison Kennedy, who just turned 81, yeah. is a magnificent performer and songwriter. Uh, I was really happy to see Angelique win. I saw her perform in Drum Heller last September, and she actually brought the house down uh, on a wonderful afternoon and evening of music in the Badlands under a full moon. Um, all of the nominees in the category were great. All I would say about the blues category is that it needs to be split, in my opinion, into um, more of an acoustic versus electric. It's kind of like apples and oranges sometimes, uh, trying to pick the best out of all of the people that are involved. A troublemaker. I know, that's my job. Holger. A ditto. <laughs> really, I, I couldn't have put it any uh, better. I think uh, Cam really uh, expressed it well. Uh, the blues category is my passion. Uh, plus the roots music categories and, and the diversity that we find in those categories. Diversity. Yeah. Okay. Carrie, do you want to get in on this? Sure, why not? Sure. Um, I shared instrumental for a long time. I think it was punishment for something. Um, and <laughs> and uh, I actually, so I really like that category. And I was in, in our poll, our voting poll, which I could show you, it's over there. But um, I voted for Esmerine and they won. And that was cool. Um, I think they didn't, no, 
I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Anyways, uh, so You're anyway, perfect. <laughs> instrumental, they did, yes. And also, I love a lot of the categories, but uh, adult alternative, that was the toughest for me because every single one of them, including Mr. Mangan, my pal, um, I really wanted to win. But the Sadies was a real heart winner for okay. because of Dallas. So, so I think that that was one that I was really watching. And otherwise, my guesses were quite bad. Uh, I didn't win the poll. Neither did Tom. <laughs> It was so great to have you at our table, Carrie, because the first thing she did, she goes, this is going to be great. Let's start a card game. You wanted to get a card game going at the table. Now, uh, do you have any questions of our co-hosts, you guys? Anybody want to ask these guys a question? You have a chance to talk to Dan Mang and Tom Wilson right there. So far at the Junos, what has been your lowest point and your highest point? Uh, Quick question, less than 20 seconds. Uh, Mike. Well, um... I mean, it's got to be the same moment. Oh, okay. And it was uh, when the Sadies were called instead of me. <laughs> because they're an amazing band. Iconic, the kindest, sweet, hardest. You know, I uh, love those guys. I love their team. Known them for a long time. Shared stages with them. Obviously, a tragedy that we lost Dallas. And uh, what, a, what a great, amazing record. We've been listening to it at dinner time at home. And uh, yeah, so I was sad for me and happy for them at the same time. Yeah. All right, if no one has a question for Tom, I do. Okay? I, I, I thought I had a question. No, no. Do you have a, no, no. I, look, I, no, I no. thought it was not a question for me, but I'll take all the questions. I don't mind. Uh, uh, the high point, and this is a serious one, was being one of 49 Indigenous artists nominated at the Junos. 49 Indigenous artists. Uh, which was a high point. The low point was misplacing my C, uh, CDB, CBD vape uh, <laughs> last night. So uh, t different worlds, but, you know, they were related, yeah. All right, no, get, uh, hand on the mic just for a second, because I, 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 in, in the 90 seconds that we have left, yes. I'm going to ask you the question I said I was going to ask you. Oh, no. What are you up to lately? Oh, it, just God. take a deep breath and tell us, because then it'll save me a lot of time. Okay, I'm writing, I'm writing my second book for Penguin Random House. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first book got turned into a movie. We're out promoting that. Uh, I just wrote a play that's being uh, produced, uh, and uh, it, it opens in uh, the spring of 24. A musical? Uh, a musical, yeah. And the musical director is from Come From Away, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, Daniel Lanois and Tara Lightfoot are joining Blackie and the Rodeo Kings this summer to do shows, but they might... I'd say that Blackie and the Rodeo Kings are joining Tara Lightfoot <laughs> and Daniel Lanois. We haven't straightened that part out at all. Um, and uh, uh, I don't know. Alan, what else am I... Margo, what else the am book. I doing? You got a book? Uh, I'm writing a new book. I got a book on my art coming out, and I have a residential school exhibition that opened at Stratford last year that is going to Queen's University in Tyndanaga. Thank um, you. Time's up. Okay, good. Thank you very much. <laughs> wow. Ooh, how about it for the assembled panel on the Juno couches? This? This is really cool. Wow. And how about it for live music and for the amazing musicians that have come here to join us? We're so excited to turn over the stage next to an incredible artist. In fact, somebody that's been holding sway over CKUA's top 30 music chart ever since her wonderful record came out. Over the course of an award-winning, illustrious career, our next guest has become truly a giant in the Canadian roots music sphere. And her debut album was a cannon fire shot uh, that let everybody know that there was a huge talent on the scene. That's been carried through with albums like Time from 2012 and the triumphant follow-up from 2022, Hold On To Love, which has just been an absolute juggernaut of joy and energy. And you've heard it crackling across CKUA's airwaves a ton. And it was nominated for Contemporary Roots Album of the Year at this year's Juno Awards. Please give it up for the wonder joined by the brilliant Donna Grant is on guitar. How about it for the legend, Shakura Saida. We thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Um, this is my friend, co-writer, and co-producer of Hold On To Love, Donna Grantis. And um, we're going to do a couple of tunes for you. Um, yeah, let's try this. I wrote this song after watching a young man get thrown to the ground by the police. He was being told to get off the road, but he wasn't on the road. 
But they kept warning him to get off the road. And finally, they knocked him down because he wasn't on the road, but they said he was on the road. And I thought about my mom growing up and being an activist down in South Carolina, in Greensboro. I thought about her picketing and I thought about her being jailed for protesting in front of McDonald's. I thought about all of the injustices that we go through. And I thought, you might hold us down. You might want us to toe the line. But the truth is, you ain't got nothing on me. You're walking fast. I'm marching slow. You're watching me as we go. Your lips tell lies. Your eyes show fear. Your ignorance got us here. You might slow me down. Want me to toe the line. But I can't be bound You ain't got nothing on me You took their son You stole their child You chased them down Ten thousand miles We'll sing our song And we'll tell our side Till you won't have nowhere else to hide. You might slow me down, want me to toe the line, but I can't be bound. You ain't got nothing on me. The tears of my eyes are the walls of my heart. When I can go on, ten more take my heart. My tears fall down from my four mothers. They told me that my life matters. Hey, you take your time and you'll lose your way. We see. Donna and I wrote a song in uh, 2009. We used to have these um, writing sessions where it was very important. We're very, we're, we're technicians about our songwriting. I, if anybody wants to take master classes from us, I'm going to give you a couple tips on what you need to do. The first thing you do is you go out and get some really good chocolate, <laughs> some yummy muffins, and some really delicious teas. Then you get together and you sit and you eat the chocolates. You need to have at least two or three different bars, though, because otherwise it's not legit. 
and then you eat the muffins, and then you look at each other and you go, so good. <laughs> so good. This is so good. And then after about an hour or two, you start writing. And we wrote this song, and unfortunately, it didn't make, or fortunately, it didn't make uh, the Brown Sugar album, but it became the title track for um, Hold On To Love. Here we go. Life is hard. Don't let it get you down. Just hold on till you turn it around. Hey, 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 hey. And don't ever think woulda, coulda, should. Cause in a little while, things will get back to being good. Yeah. Just hold on to love You know that love will help you find a way Yes, it will What's your name? And do you know who you are? Yeah. Where's your home? And have you traveled afar? Did you leave behind all that you knew? And are you alone in everything that you do? Just hold on, hold on to love. The love will help you find a way. I said, hold on, hold on. Love will help you find a way. Love will help you. Yeah. Love will help you find a way. All right, y'all. We need a little audience participation. You ready? We're gonna soul clap. If you are rhythmless, don't try this alone. Here we go. Not bad, Edmonton. Whoever said y'all ain't got a rhythm? All right, you did that part real good. Let's go on to step two. I want you to look at the next person next to you. I want you to look them deep in their eyes. Not that deep. And then I want you to say with your heart, say, I got you when the road is hard. Let me hear you say, when you're feeling down, say it louder. chat for a second. Careful, careful, watch that. Uh, well. All did you hear the background voices coming from the... I did. I heard a little bit of bass. A little bit of scoop. <laughs> I'm doing well. 
I'm doing really well. I'm 30 minutes away from heading home. <laughs> um, did you, um, I Wait, don't make it deep. Don't make it no, deep. No, Please okay, don't make it deep. <laughs> but I do want to ask you about Hold On To Love because yes. it's uh, some title just come and go. That one stuck with me before I even knew about the lyrics. I just thought, okay, well, what set that song in motion for you? I have two daughters, and at that time they were in school, one was in high school, one was in elementary, and they were going through a difficult time, both of them. And um, everything seems so big in the moment. Everything seems insurmountable. But there's this thing about knowing that you are surrounded by love, even when the people that you love are not next to you. That was really important for me. I wanted my kids to understand that I am always with them. Their grandparents are always with them. The people who love them are always with them. And if they hold on to that, they can get through anything. And I think that we as a community need to do that more. We need to make sure that the people around us, the people in need, the people who, uh, who are traveling through this world thinking that they are alone, they need to know that they are loved. And it was really important for us to get that message out there. Yeah. You, you have, you've taken on the job, I have to tell you, not only through, through your inspirational performances of doing the most important thing that we can do as artists, which is open up the door of possibilities to the people around us and make other people believe in themselves. That's not a question. That's just a giant thank you to you. Thank you, thank you. Speaking of people, there's a lot of people on this record. Can you talk about? Oh my God, talk about the people. Yeah, Talk about the people, oh, Dee. Oh, wow. Uh, so many incredible musicians. A lot of this record is about community and the, the community of musicians um, who played on it. Uh, you know, it's just incredible. Um, Tara Lightfoot, yeah. um, Shamaka Ali, Tony Rabalau, Brooke Blackburn, Paige, um, Roger, Roger. I'm just Roger, thinking Paige about Armstrong, Roger Williams, yeah. Lee Oscar, yeah. Kebs on there doing a little cameo that he didn't want credited, but I'm putting him out there right now. <laughs> um, uh, Ann Harris, the most wonderful violinist out of Chicago. Um, oh, the Eric background. Gales. Background. Oh, yeah. Eric Gales. Gales. Eric Gales oh, is on there. His wife, LaDonna, is playing tambourine on it. Um, background vocalist, oh my God, Miku. Um, just just everybody I knew. Lady A is on this album. Cecile Duquinga is on this album. Um, Colleen Allen, you know, the most Horns. wonderful of, of sax players. Yeah. Chris Gale. Chris Gale. Oh, my God. We could do this for hours. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Flohill is on this there album. You, yes. Richard yes. Flohill. Yes. Richard yes, Flohill. The flow. The flow. Yeah, um, yeah. It's the first time he's ever been in the studio, ever been asked to be on someone's <laughs> album. I couldn't believe that. We've been keeping him out for years. We've been keeping him out for years, and yet I open the gates. He's like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't know how to do this. Just, just talk. What do you mean? Do I talk into the microphone? And they just went, heart of gold. <laughs> yeah. Will we see you at festivals on the road this year? What does it look like for you? Um, I will be standing on the street corner begging for money. Okay, I know yeah. you. Busking. Please drop by Alunia Busking. too. Yeah. Um, I've got some festivals that I'm doing. Um, I'm doing a lot of collab work. One of the things that I learned in during COVID was the power of using your community yep. and being used by your community. Yep. So I'm going to Sweden next month with um, Terry O'Dabi and Anika Chambers. Um, I'm going back to Sweden in October with Lady A and Terry O'Dabi. I'm um, doing some work with Kevin Burke uh, later this month, who's out of the States. Uh, a lot of collabing, yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you for you. your music. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Well, that was amazing. Uh, how about it one more time for these incredible musicians and everybody that's taken the time to come and share their gifts with us today? It's been how about that? phenomenal. And their story? We're about to welcome in an incredible musician who's been building a remarkable discography over the course of six albums and counting, and is just so incredibly insightful, ever curious, and full of 
musical and societal possibility in her music. Her latest album is How Is It That I Should Look at the Stars? And it's earned The Weather Station, a nomination for Adult Alternative Album of the Year and a stacked field at the 2023 Juno Awards. We're so thrilled to have her join us here in this place for a chat today. Please make some noise for the brilliant Tamara Lindemann of The Weather Station. The Weather Station. Hello. Hello. Do you have friends on this couch, these couches? I do, yeah. I we do. shared a table last night. That's true, yes. Do, have yes. you shared a stage? Yeah, in Europe. Uh, That's right, yeah. Ages ago, ages wow. Yeah, wow, a long time ago. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, I, I, your, your record has been spent a lot of time in our home, actually. Oh, yeah. Your records, you. I should say. That's nice to know. Uh, tell me about last night. How was your last night? It was lovely, you know, it was lovely. I always, like, appreciate something about the Junos, which is always unexpected, where when I'm there and there's all the different genres of music, I'm reminded of how huge Canada is and how much different music there is outside of my scene. And I, I always appreciate that. There was a time, m many years ago, when the Junos were just getting started, and they, <clears throat> they said, uh, we need managers, we need agents, we need labels our own label, we need our own industry, our infrastructure, we don't mm -hmm. have the infrastructure. What you see now with the Junos is the infrastructure at work. We, we built the industry a year at a time and it's incredibly fascinating to watch it grow and where, where will it keep growing to and what, how will we add to it? That's what I like most about the Junos is, is seeing the, as you say, the, 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 the width of the portfolio. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Question. Yeah. You know, I love, I love, we've worked together a little bit. Um, my question is, can we sing together soon? <laughs> sure. Okay, of good. Course, yeah. Uh, I'm, okay, I, I have your number. I'll give you a call <laughs> probably around April, but I, I would love, to, I'd love us to try something together. Yeah. Sure. It'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was my question. I, I wanted to ask, <laughs> are, are, are we co talking co writing uh, and who's doing the harmonies? Uh, Oh, I'm not a very good harmony singer, so... Uh, I'll do the you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Actually, what are you two great. doing? Also, let... I'm in, man. I think we've got a new band going. I don't know how the money's going to be split up, but you know what? We'll figure, figure that out. out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask, um, you know, you've written so eloquently about, uh, both in articles and in your music, about the sort of existential uh, climate crisis that we face. Um, and I don't know if you meant to do this, but you kind of became a bit of like a, a, the go-to artist journalists would reach out to and talk to when they needed to respond to a new UN study or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, that sounds terrifying to me. Uh, I, you know, I, uh, as, as an artist, I, to, to all of a sudden now to be like sort of a voice of reason on this big, huge, complicated topic, uh, I can't imagine what kind of burden that was. I wonder if you had comments or, or something to say about that experience. Was it tough? That's a really thoughtful question. Nobody's ever asked me well that. Done. Thank you. It was really tough, actually. It was really tough. Um, I was really grateful because when I started out, I kind of felt like I wanted to be a part of the sort of movement of like ending climate silence. So I felt really proud that I was able to bring the conversation into all of these spaces where it hadn't been mentioned. Um, like music and like exclaim and like pitchfork. And so I felt really happy at first, but then it was, you know, and I, it was very, it felt like a ton of responsibility and I, every time I did an interview or spoke about it, I just, I did so much research and thought of like, how can I not perpetuate negative narratives that I think have been perpetuated for far too long? How can I be honest? How can I break down this idea? There's so many ideas that I want to break down in that field and among them, this idea that if you stand up and say, I care about <laughs> not <laughs> having this happen, which should be something anyone can say. should be base level. That should yeah, be base yeah. level, but people think it's like, oh, you care about climate. You must be perfect. You're the climate person. You are yeah. great. You are good. There's all of this strange projection that comes up, and I, and I just think it's so strange because we all care, and I know that. 
I even know, you know, people who work in Fort McMurray, they care too, you know? Nobody, and yet it's almost like taboo to say it because if you start talking about it, people have all of this baggage and all of these agendas. So I really wanted to just be a regular person and almost kind of be really honest about like just being like, I'm really scared. I don't know what to think about it. Sometimes I really struggle with this. Um, but it was still hard to kind of have all that projection of like, you are a perfect person. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not. <laughs> no, not very. I have a question uh, for both of you, and that is, um, and I asked it previously, but it, it applies to both of you. The power of music to change, to make change, even small changes, even to keep the ball rolling forward. What, what do you believe in? What do I believe in? Well, I mean, do you believe that the music can make those changes? Do we ask too much of it? I, well, I mean, as I said, my mother was an activist. My mother went down to Greensboro, North Carolina, and she was one of the young people who was recruited by the Greensboro Four, and they sat um, in Woolworths and in front of McDonald's and picketed for rights. And while they sat and stood and were dragged off to jail, they sang spirituals and they sang protest music and they kept each other alive and encouraged and strengthened by singing, you know, jail over bail and, you know, we ain't gonna move, you know, the songs like that. So as far as I'm concerned, my ancestors survived. I am here because of the power of music, yep. you know, feel songs gospel music, blues music, all of those musics that actually strengthened us and allowed us to make space for ourselves so that we could actually be in this earth or be on this earth and be in this continent, you know? Freedom train. Mm -hmm. How about you? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think music has incredible power just for being human. I think we need it. I think we need it to connect to each other and to ourselves and I think music is a conduit for us to feel our emotions, which I think in in such a disconnected world is like something we desperately need. Um, but I do think sometimes when it comes to something like the climate crisis, it is almost like too much pressure is put on artists or music. And and I think sometimes I can feel a little frustrated when you know entities want to interview me or something, and you're like, I don't. I'm just writing songs. You know, like if you're in the government you have actual power to actually do something that we, you know, it's like we need legislation. We don't need, you know, that's what we need. But of course, you know, of course music also has that power and it, you know, like it, it, we need it. We're humans and we need it. I think it kind of fill in the gaps, like language fails us sometimes or like True. social context or, you know, the, it's like you get tongue tied, the thing you want to say, but you can't get it out. Or, and True. language is always failing us or at least failing me. And uh, I feel like sometimes a chord change can say, can, it's like, like there's all these gaps between us and it can kind of be like the glue that fills it in. And if you can stand with thousands of people in front of a festival stage and sort of feel a similar emotion, then you feel more empathy, you feel more united, and then you walk away from that. And then you have like more fuel to go out and actually make those policy changes because you have felt like there is something worth making the policy changes for. That's true. That makes, yeah. you know, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Thank you all. You didn't ask me, but I had a yeah, no, no, so. no, 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 no. I'm glad you had a mic in your hand. Thank you for being here on the Juno Couch. Thank you, Grant. Terry, let's send them off. How about it for all these amazing people? Isn't this incredible? Wow. Thank you. I'm I'm uh, grinning through tears after that. We have another incredible musical performance coming up next from Amy Skye and Mark Jordan. This is going to be phenomenal. Now, between the two of them, they have something like a combined eight decades of experience in the music industry here in Canada and elsewhere. And despite being together as a married couple for 34 years, they had somehow never actually made an album together until very recently when they put out their first duo release, yes! He Sang, She Sang, which earned them a nomination for Adult Contemporary Album of the Year at the 2023 Juno Awards. So thrilled to welcome back great friends of Terry David Mulligan's and amazingly gifted musicians to share some music with us. These are Mark Jordan and Amy Skye. Please make them feel welcome. Thank you. It is, it, it's great to be here and, and um, you know, 
part of the reason that we have been together for 35 years now is that we, to date, have not done a duet album together. <laughs> so uh, happy to say we made it. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, the end can't be far <laughs> No, I think, we're, I think we're in the safe place now. Um, part of the challenge of doing a duet record when you're both songwriters is, is actually finding songs that work for both voices. And this was one of the first things um, I wrote. Uh, I wanted to make it kind of like an Everly Brothers song where both voices sung the, together the entire way. Uh, and uh, it's called Fallen For You. Falling for you To my surprise Over the edge A drowning Keep falling for you Wondering why Wondering how Suddenly I Suddenly now Should I fly like every fool Thank you. I just want to say something. Um, you may have noticed halfway through the first verse there, I started like choking and asking for water. I totally forgot you guys live in a goddamn desert out here. <laughs> and every time I sing out here, I'm like, oh yeah, right, no, I was supposed to like have water in my hands at all times in the prairies. Yeah. But it's nice to be here. Thank you, Edmonton, for having us. Uh, what am I supposed to say about Bonnie Raitt? Well, we're doing one of her songs. Well, yeah. But did she write it? She did not write it, but you wrote a song for her. Well, I did write a song for her that she did do. And, uh, but uh, she's one of Amy's favorite singers and one of my favorite singers. So I thought we'd do this. You know, actually, one of the challenges when, when we were doing a duet record, because... Mark comes more from the 
jazz influence world and I'm more from the Americana influence world and it's sort of like if you did a Venn diagram of like jazz artists over here and Americana art artists over here in the middle of the Venn diagram would be Bonnie Raitt <laughs> and uh, we're just such huge huge fans of hers and um, we did two songs on the record actually that she had originally done and this is just uh, a beautiful song and it's called You mm -hmm. Yeah. 
you. Thank you. How do we get through that? Hey, you kids, come on over. Come on over to the couch. Um, by the way, uh, uh, as a great segue from Mark and Amy, we're going to a hockey rink. Uh, we're going to go to the, the Juno Cup, Cup. Sorry. The Juno Cup. Uh, Jim Cuddy is, is hosting this for Music Cares. Uh, oh, there you are. I am here. We might a little more volume. Um, oh, well. Yes, sir. Mark Jordan says he's wearing the Juno Cup. Uh, <laughs> is, is the game done? The game is done, yes. It was a 4-3 uh, four, four, or 5-4. Four, 4-3 four, three, four, three victory for the musicians. But the I know big, you're shocked. But really, you? but the big winner uh, at, on the end of the day is Music, music Counts, Music Cares. You know what? Music counts. It, it permeates the whole Junos. It's fantastic. There's a Music Counts Award on the on the on the gala night. This event. Um, lots of people are are doing it. They gave out an ambassadorial award to Kevin Drew last night for programs that he started. Yeah. So it's amazing how far Music Counts has come in the time that we've been doing this, and uh, it's very gratifying because you know, well, I've, there's never a, uh, there's never the need never goes down. The number of schools keeps going up. That need their instruments. Anyway, you're right. It's great. Okay. Um, uh, we, do you know, do you want to ask any questions of our, our guests here? We have uh, Mark and Amy. We have got uh, Tom Wilson is uh, getting set up here. And uh, and Dan oh. Megan. I just wanted to thank Jim for oh, letting us well, in. Ask, and Lindsay. Ask, wait, a minute, wait a minute. Amy's I, saying something. Amy's speaking to the crowd. Wait. I, I just wanted to th say thank you, Jim, for lending us and Lindsay for our duet record. <laughs> Oh, isn't she amazing? Amazing. Every time I, I play with her, it's like every time she's in my solo band, and when I play with her openers or somebody, I think, they're going to steal her, of course. She's so, and yeah. she's such an incredible musician. Well, anyway, be, that's be really warned. nice. Be warned. <laughs> uh, that's great. Did your boys come on the ice with you? Yes, yes. Uh, Devin was sort of the second star of the game. He scored a couple goals. He had a um, penalty shot and a, a Warren. Yeah. And there, we played last night at the SEMA. Awards and, and uh, yeah, we're doing, we're doing it all here. So it's really fun. So, oh. as, but you got to ask Dan, Dan about it. Uh, maybe you already talked about it. Of his, uh, of his go on uh, this video. I, I just have to turn it on, uh, but this guy is so funny. That was, uh, I can't tell uh, you, he's better than I know. He's not, he's not a professional comedian. But no, Dan. Yeah. yeah well, thank you, Jim. I, I after so the uh, Jim came up to me last night and said, you know, kind of like cross the room. It seemed like to tell me that he enjoyed my That's my my uh, performance on the CBC debaters, and uh, I, I I was very appreciative. I, I noticed that it wasn't about my songs that he mentioned, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, I, I, I was—I I repeated that story to two or three people afterwards. I was so charmed, and you're such a sweetheart, Jim. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, uh, you know, everybody says I'm not really a nice guy because I honestly thought that the song you played at the end was kind of cheating. Yeah, it was. You, know, that you was. won with a song, and that's not fair. That—that's that is a, a, something in your arsenal that the others don't have. Well, tilting it the was table in my song. favor. Yeah. Uh, uh, James, James, I want to thank you for doing this. I want to thank you for being part of, of the fourth annual Juno Couch. Oh, I, I think it's great. Thank you for, uh, I know it was probably difficult to get all this done, but, but thank you very much for doing this. And then, uh, we'll, we'll bye see, to everybody there. We'll and, see you on the road. Jim Cuddy, ladies and gentlemen. James okay. Cuddy. So long. Bye-bye. Okay. I know I, pro I know I probably am running out of time. I, I, will, I just want to know, your, you released a single. When does that album come out? When does it come out? April 21st. April 21st. What's it called? Wait for the Sun. Okay. Thank you, both of you. Both of you. Because now, uh, I want to thank Dan Mangan. I want to thank Grant. I want to thank Vish. I want to thank everybody. The thank you list goes on forever. But I want to start right here with the one and only Tom Wilson, who uh, stepped forward and said, yeah, let's do this. And he's got a song to take us out. Well, this trouble... Coming at us, a broken promise from the tower. But we don't stand for the flags and emblems. We're just taking what's still ours. 
Yeah, there's trouble all around us. Police are on our back. But when we get on the Grand River, oh, mama, we won't look back. Well, they marched us to their churches and they stoned us with their faith took our belts and took our language and left our tears out to waste yeah there's trouble all around us Police are on attack, but when we get on the Grand River, oh mama, we won't look back. Holy Land, give it all back. Just sit down, sinner, you've got no claim. We will always rise above your laws in our mother's loving name. Yeah, there's trouble all around us. Police are on attack. But when we get on, the Grand River, oh mama, we won't look back. Yeah, there's trouble all around us. Police are on attack. But when we get on the Grand River, oh mama, we won't look back when we get on the Grand River. Oh, mama, we won't look back.